Hey guys, One Piece Nation here today to bring you my top 5 One Piece arcs. Coming in at number 5 is Arlon Park. I love this arc because it's the first arc of One Piece that I saw that made me just go, Damn, this is epic. I love this series. I loved it. It was just, it was such a well written arc. And it's the arc when you realize how great of a writer, 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 Oda is. It also ties in to something Garp said to Dada during the Ace, Sabo, and Luffy flashback arc. Because some people need to forget that Garp said if you insulted a member of Roger's crew, he would even destroy an entire country. He, I'm paraphrasing, but he said something along those lines. What Luffy did in Arlon Park was very similar. While it wasn't an insult that was the reason Luffy took down Arlon, it was the fact that Arlon made Nami cry. It, it's very similar in the way that it's a very simple reason. An insult and making somebody cry, very similar, simple reason that most people would never even consider going and attacking somebody over. But Luffy did it. So it even ties in to Luffy's connection and similarities to Gold Roger, Goldie Roger. And as I said before, it's the arc that really got me hooked. And it just, it really is an arc that it got me hooked. So I just feel like it has to be in here. It has a lot of great memorable moments. It's also the first arc, first arc when you really see how far Luffy will go for his crew. I mean... And you get an insight into a character, which is the fact that he doesn't help people. He's not a hero. But if he was a hero, he would have just helped Nami anyway. But you get a real insight into a character in saying that he didn't help Nami because he didn't want that help. How he respects people's freedom and he will only help somebody if they want help. So it gave a great insight to a character. And it was just overall a fantastic arc. Coming in at number 4 is Alabasta. In Alabasta, we are introduced to the character of Ace, which already gives the arc a ton of points in my opinion. We get introduced to the second division commander of Whitebeard's crew. At this point, we don't really know who Whitebeard is, but it starts up this whole mystery. Like, why is Zoro so intrigued when he sees the mark on Ace's back? Like, why, why are people so scared of this Whitebeard, what's so big of a deal about Ace being a division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates, like, what does that mean? Like, why is Nami, like, having, like, a heart attack when she sees that mark on Ace's back? Like, why is she so terrified of that mark? Like, it just starts up the Whitebeard hype, and we get to see Ace, like, demolish. Ace destroyed Smoker, easily. Easily. A guy who had been kicking Luffy's ass Every time they meet, Ace is just like, no, and destroys him. That was epic, and the fights in this arc, like, Zoro versus Mr. One, with that foreshadowing of observation hockey, which I believe they were foreshadowing, with Zoro dodging the, uh, the rubble, and how Zoro literally, on the fly, learned to cut through solid steel. It's just amazing, amazing arc. And especially how Luffy lost two times, two times to Crocodile, it, it, it it's mind blowing, this arc. But in my opinion, the biggest shocker in this arc, without a doubt, is how right Crocodile was, in a way when he was telling Luffy, "You haven't mastered your devil fruit. You are too weak. You won't survive the Grand Line." And it was just, like, the way Crocodile was speaking was in a way right, because they were, at the Bodhi, they were destroyed by Kuma. And if it wasn't had not been Kuma, it would have been Kizaru. Like, they were going, they were going to lose that battle, no matter what the outcome. And it's just amazing how Crocodile said they would lose, eventually. They could not survive this day, and that Luffy was going to fail, and Luffy did fail. So it was an amazing setup and really well done arc. Fantastic. 
coming in at number three is the Return to the Bodhi arc. Now, I love this arc. One of the main reasons is because what people seem to forget is how long the crew was actually separated for. Like, how long they were separated. Because in the manga, it took even longer than it did in the anime for them to get back together. Because the manga, of course, the anime can, can adapt like three or four chapters per episode, while the manga would adapt one chapter a week. The point is that it was amazing just to see all the post kind get design and see Luffy literally one-shotting this guy that took out not just him, but not, this is the thing, but Pat the Fist guy, they didn't just take out the monster trio. He, it took out Luffy, Lo, a, a full power Luffy, a weakened Zoro, a full power Sanji, Nami, Usopp, Chopper, Robin, Frankie, Brooke. It took out the entire crew pre time gift, and you see Luffy, gear second, without any effort, just one shot it. Like on some fairy tale crap. Just one shot the damn thing. It would just, it blew my mind when I first saw it. I was like, how much stronger is he? And the entire arc, then you see Zoro and Sanji e easily cut the down the path of this uh, just really well done. And the reason this arc is so high up is because of how just much I love seeing the crew together again, seeing the dynamics of the characters again, seeing how some of the, dy the dynamic between some characters has changed drastically. I have a dynamic that Nami had with uh, Chopper, Luffy, and Usopp was very, is very different now post-time kit than it is pre-time kit because if you notice, she doesn't get, she doesn't hit them as often post-time kit. She still hits them, but not as often. And I, that, that's like an interesting change of dynamic. Of course, some dynamics are still the same. Zoro and Sanji. But that was the dynamic I love to see. Like, I love seeing them going at each other. I love, I will go back at least once every two months and rewatch that scene where Zoro and Sanji are arguing on Sabote. And he's like, I'll slice you into pieces, you shithead. And Sanji just like, no, you won't, you stupid moss head. And Zoro's like, number seven ice. I love that. I love that moment. So much. It's like the first thing they do after seeing each other for not seeing each other for two years is try to cut each other down or in Sonic K kick each other down, I guess you would say. But yeah, the bo the return of the Bodhi arc is without a doubt my number three. I just love the arc. It's an amazing one. Some of you may be very shocked by what number two is. Number two, Marine Ford. This arc was the catalyst for the tie skip. This arc needed to happen. And boy was it amazing. This arc introduced really characters of such tremendous power. And characters that had been hyped up for so long got to fight. This is the only time in the series we can flat out say we saw a Yoko fight. Not one time, post-time skip or pre-time skip, have we ever seen a Yonko fight, but in this arc, and that Yonko was Whitebeard. And let me tell you, Whitebeard was amazing. Whitebeard tore the hell out of everybody he fought. Like, even Akainu, the current fleet admiral. I don't want to say he decimated him, but he kind of did. Like, Whitebeard was just like it. Yes, he got half his face blown off, but this, this guy was 72 years old, and he was sick and dying. I get excited just talking about this amazing arc. But I, if I'm going to talk about this arc, like why I love it, I have to talk about this. Now, I want to make one thing clear. I love Ace the character, and I did not want it to happen, but I love the moment. Ace's death. Now, I hold it a whole video on it. On why I don't think Luffy achieved his goal and why I think the death was Ace's fault. Clearly Ace's fault. But the point is that the moment itself, taking away all 
you know, not being critical about it, just talking about how much I like the moment, I love it. Just the speech Ace gives to Luffy about, you know, like, thank you, and the reference to Sabo, and how, like, even though he's a monster, they all thank you for loving me. Uh, that, that quote, though, like, even though I had the blood of a demon, thank you for loving me. Possibly one of Ace's best quotes in the whole theory, being that would just... I will probably never forget that quote as long as I... Probably the rest of my life. Like, that is an amazingly written quote. And this whole arc is just filled with stuff, with moments, that set the catalyst for the rest of the theory. And the biggest one is that speech. Whitebeard gives before he died. Alright, I'm gonna be honest here. When Whitebeard started talking... When he was like, it's not you. I, I did not know. I did not. I knew about Ace's death. I was spoiled on that. But I had no idea what that Whitebeard speech. So when I heard Whitebeard start talking and being like, it's not you. You're not the one Roger is waiting for. And he went on to talk about the One Piece and the Will of D. And how his final word were like, the One Piece is real. And then and you know, it like set off another age of piracy. I, I'm just standing there, blown away. Oda, that Oda just dumped. It took, Oda just took a giant dump. But instead of poop, it was information. And he took it and just dropped it on the fandom at that moment. He, uh, he had white beard. I don't even know. Maybe, like, I think that's the, like, the most we've ever learned about the Will of D throughout the entire series. The only other time we could have learned more, we had to know, but the only other time we could have even possibly learned more than we did at that moment would have been if Luffy hadn't, if Luffy and Robin had not, you know, decided not to listen to Rayleigh about information on the One Piece and the Voice entry. So the sign for those two moments, or that, that, that moment with Rayleigh, this guy is the most knowledgeable person on that info we ever had. And it was just an amazingly well done moment. But, I'm now going to move on to number one. But before that, I would like to do some honorable mentions. Skypea. Impel Down. Stabodi Acapelago. Two to Marine Ford being number one. I'm sure you all get it. Well, here it is. Eddie's Lobby. I mean, what is there to say? Amazing. Amazingly animated, in, at least in the remastered version. Looks amazing. It just, the fight scenes are great. We get the introduction to Luffy Gears, Gear 2nd, and Gear 3rd. And, let's be honest, anything with Robin in this arc is amazing. Like, any scene, I think the best is obviously the I Want to Live moment. Was just... Is that one of my favorite moments in the entire theory? That, that may be my favorite moment in the entire theory. It's amazing. But it's just... And it's all of the... And Luffy declaring war on the world government. Pretty much saying, I don't give a damn how many enemies there are. It's just... It's so well done. This arc. It really is. There are no words to describe it. I know I went over all the other arcs a lot in a lot more detail. But this is my number one arc. Meaning, this is the arc I have fanboy over. Like, this is the arc I have stick here, and I'm like, I can't name everything that's good about it. Like, Sniper King, or Stoku King. Amazing. Like, amazing. Like, I wish Usopp was normally like that. But he isn't. Because, <laughs> damn it, Oda. <laughs> but, it, it, uh, honestly, I can't, I can't even. And then, and then, of course, Chopper, first ever monster point. Uh, and just, Sanji taking Sanji's first ever Diablo Jumbo. I, and then Zoro using his nine sword style, that like demonic attack that we still know nothing about for the first time. I mean, and, and the Mary, and, the, and all, of course, of course, the Mary coming to save them. The Mary, the going Mary funeral with still is one of the saddest moments in all of One Piece. And just, of course, but Usopp's apology when you're leaving on the sunny, the fight earlier in the arc between Luffy and Usopp. Now I know that part of the Water 7 arc, 
but I'm including all of this in like one. It's one story, Water 7 slash any lobby. But Luffy versus Usopp, like when Luffy and Usopp fight, it's just amazingly done. Amazing. Zoro speaks to Luffy about how losing a crew, leaving the crew shouldn't be such an easy thing to do. And you better know damn well that that you just go cry and you let Usopp just rejoin like, and like nothing ever happened. I'll be the next one to leave the crew. And I, I, I still, I remember that speech. And he's, uh, that, especially the part where he's like, he may be an idiot, but he's the captain. A crew that doesn't respect their captain is sure to collapse. I mean, this whole arc, Water 7, and his lobby, it's all beautifully, beautifully done. My favorite argument theory by far. But guys, please tell me in the comment section down below what your favorite arc, in, top five arcs in One Piece is or are, and why. And you want to, if you don't want to, whatever. But remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. This is One Piece Nation signing out. Have a great day, guys.